turn in your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 5. Uh, this weekend is, is Memorial Day weekend, and obviously it's, it's for uh, the memory of those that have served our country and given their lives uh, in sacrifice so that we can have our freedom. And I was reminded this morning that the greatest one that gave up his life in battle was Jesus Christ. He was in a war for our souls with the devil, and uh, he has won that battle if we'll yield to God and his mercy in our life. Uh, also, uh, I meant to share this earlier, it, uh, if you've ordered a, a, one of the t-shirts uh, in, in memory of Keith, uh, I have placed that order. They'll be here within a couple of weeks. Uh, I went on and paid for them, so if, if I haven't got your money yet, just catch me at some point and, and we'll get that called up. But, 1 Peter chapter 5, we're going to look at verses 1 through 11. The elders who are among you, I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed, shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion but willingly, not for dishonest gain but eagerly. Uh, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Likewise, the younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. M. Littleton wrote in uh, the Moody Monthly magazine in June of 1989. And he wrote, There's a story about a proud young man who came to Socrates asking for knowledge. He walked up to the muscular philosopher and said, Oh, great Socrates, I come to you for knowledge. So Socrates recognized a pompous numbskull when he saw one. He led the young man through the streets to the sea and chest deep into water. Then he asked, what do you want? Knowledge, O oh wise Socrates, said the young man with a smile. Socrates put his strong hands on the man's shoulder and pushed him underwater. Thirty seconds later, Socrates led him up. What do you want, he asked again. Wisdom, the young man sputtered. Oh, great and wise Socrates. Socrates crunched him under the water again. Thirty seconds passed. Thirty-five, forty. Socrates let him up. The man was gasping. What do you want, young man? Between heavy, heaving breasts, the fellow wheezed. Knowledge, oh, wise and wonderful. Well, Socrates jammed him under again. Forty-five seconds passed. Fifty. What do you want? Air, the young man screeched. I need air. When you want knowledge, as you have just wanted air, then you will have knowledge. Now, knowledge is not something that we can obtain just by uh, asking other people for it. You, you can usually gain knowledge by one of two ways. And one of those ways is experience. Uh, we can go through the trials and errors of life to discover what works, what doesn't work, and, and we can grow from our mistakes and we can get things right. Uh, now that route is usually a difficult route. Uh, it's a very long route, and sometimes it may take us a whole lifetime to figure out all of our mistakes and, and how we can avoid them in the future. Uh, the other way is that we actually listen to those that have made mistakes and learn 
from them so that we don't make those same mistakes and we don't have to suffer through all of that trial and error stage in life. Now, many kids think that their parents are, are numbskulls, that they really aren't that smart. Uh, they, they, they want to figure out their own way in life and, and they don't think too much of how their parents are trying to direct them. Uh, and sometimes later in life, they're going to find out that their parents were actually pretty smart people. Uh, they, had, they had the answers, and, and uh, I can know from my standpoint, I, I probably should have listened a little bit better to avoid some of that pain. But in our scripture today, Peter calls for the elders of the church to lead by example, and then to care for the members that are entrusted to them. Uh, the Greek word presbyteros most likely is referring to uh, bishops, preachers, elders, or deacons. But it can also refer to elders as in the older members of the congregation, uh, the older, wiser members of the congregation. In Titus chapter 2, Paul is telling both the older men and the older women to lead the younger ones uh, that are here in the faith. We're supposed to show them how to live faithfully. Uh, Basically, as a preacher, a deacon, or just an older, wise person in the congregation, we have an excellent opportunity to lead the younger Christians in the faith. We can help them to grow. Now, biblical wisdom uh, is one of the most precious gifts that anybody can gain in life. Uh, but we must know God's Word in order to share God's Word. So we have, to, we have some work to do as Christians. We should uh, be reading God's Word and studying God's Word on a, on a regular basis. Let's look back at verses 1 through 4. Uh, the, elder, the elders who are among you I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed, shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Uh, in, in this particular case, I said that it could possibly be talking about uh, older members of the congregation, but in this particular case, it's definitely talking about uh, the preacher and the deacons in, in our church. Uh, and Peter is addressing this because of what he wrote uh, just a, a few paragraphs back in chapter 4 in verse 17 through 19. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. I think sometimes when words are in writing, they might lose the meaning of which they should have been spoken uh, at the tone in which they speak them. Now, I think we've all heard of preachers in the past that, that stand up, scream, and holler, and preach hellfire and brimstone to their congregation on a routine basis. Now that's not particularly my personality uh, normally. Normally that's just not me. But for the sake of the scripture today, Peter is using that tone in his writing. It's time for God's church and for God's people to start acting like Jesus Christ. There's too many churches that are living in this country that are not acting godly in anything that they do. And it's time for God to start taking a stand in the church and for us as Christians to be modeling His character, not only within these walls, but as we go outside of the doors as well. Now, when we go out into the world and we look just like the world, then God's not getting any glory for it. Now, we as Christians, we need to go out there and bring the glory to God. But there's too many churches that barely have given God their heart, let alone anything else. And, and they, they're, they're certainly not working for the, for the good of God. 
And what the scripture is, is saying is that it starts at the top of the food chain. It starts with the preacher. It starts with the deacons. And then it filters down into the regular members of the church. Uh, the older members have gone down to the younger ones. The younger ones in the faith are growing in the faith. And we need to be here to help them to grow in the faith. So it starts with us. And we should be the ones that are committed to proclaiming the good news. We must commit our souls in doing good in whatever we do in honor of and in service of our Lord God and our Creator. Uh, there are many scriptures that talk about God creating us, but the devil would have us to believe that, uh, that we went from goo to an animal to you. Now, obviously, that's a bunch of nonsense, and I've preached it before, and I'm, I'm sure y'all have heard it all the years that you've been in church. All of that uh, uh, is nonsense. But you know what? I'm starting to believe in, in reverse uh, evolution. And what I mean by that is I can see that in this world we're going from you as a person to acting like an animal, and one day it's going to be goo. And... What I mean is we used to have basic compassion for people. We see somebody in trouble and we help. Uh, we lend a hand. We, we give our heart to them as people. But as you can tell, our world has definitely gotten away from that. We don't care about anybody uh, in this world. We're all in this for ourselves. And that's got to change. But we start acting like an animal where it's uh, kill or be killed. We're going to take care of our own. But I can tell you one day, Jesus is going to bust through the clouds and he's going to take his children home. And what's going to happen to this earth is it's going to get burnt up in the elements. And all those people that are ignoring God are going to be turned to goo when they're burned up in the flames. Now, that should let alone, that one thing right there should make it utterly important for us as Christians to be sharing our faith. Because if you got people that you love... And you know what they're doing is going to send them to hell. We should make it our utmost priority in our life that we share the gospel with them so that that doesn't happen. But you see, we get lost. We only want to think about ourselves. And, and I can tell you, uh, probably as a pastor, that I'm guilty of that uh, to some extent as well. I should be speaking up more to those that I love or maybe even just my enemies or people that I work with or friends. I should be speaking up more for God. I know that uh, God is asking me to do that. But it says, If the righteous are scarcely saved, what will happen to the ungodly and the sinner? You see, God has entrusted all of us to live according to his word and to lead others to that saving grace. He has commanded us to teach others about how we should live and act in this world. So look back at verse 5 through verse 7. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. God tells us that we should submit to one another Meaning that we don't demand that everything be our way. And I know that can be difficult, not only in the churches, but in the world as well. Where we demand that things be done uh, according to uh, our standards. Uh, but we should be reaching out to people. We should be working for the greater good uh, of the gospel of our Lord. Uh, we submit to each other, and, and more importantly... We should submit to God uh, in all things. The devil is working behind the scene to, dis to disrupt the work of the Holy Spirit. He's doing everything he can to make God's work go away. Uh, now, I can personally tell you a lot of things that God, that the devil is doing in this world to disrupt our world. But until you fully give yourself to God, you wouldn't believe what I'm telling you. So we need to fully submit to God in order that we might be able to see what is going on in our world. And one of the biggest tools that the devil has is pride. We can be too stubborn and too proud to seek forgiveness 
and direction from the Lord. We want to force through this world on our own. We want the world to see how strong we are. And I can tell you, when the world sees us going through this life on our own without God, they're going to see us. They're going to see strength in us. But when they see us going through this world under the authority and leadership of Jesus Christ, what they see is Him. They don't see us. We think it, it makes us look weak if we depend upon God. But I can tell you from experience, when I started my scripture, I was talking about experience from the older, wiser people. I have a greater strength to accomplish anything because of God living inside of me. Now, Paul talked about that uh, weakness and that strength in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 10. And at least I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that he might depart, that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. So we need to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God and yield our lives over to Him. And then we need to acknowledge to the world that our strength is because of Jesus and not because of anything that they see in us. Look back at verses 8 through 11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I saw a video this week on Facebook. And maybe some of y'all have saw, uh, seen it on Facebook as well. But uh, I, I'm going to change the title of the video. But it was it, was, it had a, a little coarse language in it. But the video was the moment that Joe messed up. And uh, in the video, uh, it shows this guy harassing a dog that is chained up. And, and it's a vicious dog. And, and he's doing everything he can to get this dog riled up. Uh, and the dog's on the chain, and he keeps jumping at him, and he, he's not uh, able to get to him. So Joe keeps going and going and going until that moment that the chain breaks. That's the moment that Joe knew that he messed up. You see, that dog laid into him with everything that he had. All that aggression that Joe had riled up in him, he gave him every bit of it. Uh, you see, we play games with the devil. We think that he's chained up, that he can't reach us, that he's not going to harm us. We, we want to go and, and do the things that he's telling us to do. Uh, but there's great harm in what the devil is trying to do. Sometimes the devil may even act like he is man's best friend. Uh, he's sitting right by our side and he's, he's trying to help us find comfort and peace in his way. But that ain't the way it happens. You see, the devil is not our friend. He's not giving us comfort. He's not giving us peace. And one of these days, if we keep playing games with the devil, he's going he's gonna to break that chain or he's going to rise up from sitting beside us and he's going to leave our lives devastated. We're going to be hurting and suffering because of the ways that he has tried to lead us in. You see, we might suffer for following Jesus, but we're supposed to stand because of Jesus. You see, Jesus gives us the strength to resist the devil, to fight him away, to, to get away from our lives, to get away from our families, to stop hounding us and harassing us. And we can do that when we have faith in Jesus. Too many people think that they're safe. Just like Job, he saw the devil was chained up, he thought he was safe. 
Too many people in this world, they think that they're safe, that they're going to heaven, that everything's good, there's no problems in life. But one of these days, that devil's going to get the victory over them. And, and I'm afraid what they're going to find out when they stand before the Father. So the question is, are you going to be safe in the arms of the Father? Or will you have your back turned? Allowing the devil to attack you and your family? Will you resist the devil? Will you chase after God's will for your life? I can see the devil hurt a lot of people in this world. A lot of people that I love. What God has called us to do is share God's love with them to help them find forgiveness of their sins, to turn from their sins, so that they don't have to experience an eternity away from God. I can't imagine anything worse than seeing one person enter into hell. Even people I don't like can't bear the thought of seeing somebody suffer. You see, Jesus, he couldn't bear that thought either. And he went to the cross to make the way for us to turn to him. And what he requires of us is to give him our lives. Everybody says that, that salvation is a free gift from God. It is in, in a sense. But what it cost us is our heart. If we give God our heart for him to work and to do what he wishes, then that's where we get salvation. Because then we truly understand what the love of God is. Because we love him in that same aspect. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you that you're faithful to help us to resist the devil. God, I just pray that uh, we can be faithful to you like you are to us. Help us to love like you love. Help us go out into the world. And Father, help us to be that light. We give this time to you, Father. Do with as you wish. Pray that your spirit's moving and, and that uh, hearts are open to your will. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.